Go for it. Thanks for uh, I don't know. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. For what? Uh, um, um, Another episode of Story time. Yeah, this one is crazy. We're hanging out in the car right now because um, the house is being cleaned. And so we brought some library books with us and we're going to do it a little different. I'll read so Evie can see the pictures and then I'll turn it around so you can see the pictures. But we're hanging out in the bakery parking lot. We had some ham and cheese croissants and Evie already drank all of her hot cocoa. Was it good? It wasn't good. You just drank it all really fast for no reason. I don't want it. Oh, you don't want it? Well, good thing because it's all gone. All right. Well, here's your water if you need it. And now we're going straight. So yesterday we finished up the pile of Halloween books we had. Now we've got a lot of... What's the next holiday? What are we going to read about now, Evie? Thanksgiving. Mm Mm-hmm. So we're going to start with... Over the River, A Turkey's Tale. This is by Derek Anderson, and it is based on the song by Lydia Maria Child. I'm thinking that song might be, Over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. The horse knows the way to carry the sleigh. But that's usually a Christmas song, isn't it? I don't, so we'll see. I haven't read this one yet. We read a couple of the other ones already. Oh, right here. Here's the music. Over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. The horse knows the way to carry the sleigh through the white and drifted snow. Over the, oh, over the river and through the woods. Oh, how the wind does blow. It stings the toes and bites the nose as over the ground we go. I can even lick my nose. What? Are you trying to lick your nose? That is so crazy. I can even lick my nose. All right. So let's see what's going on with a turkey's tail. This, it looks like, is the turkey in question. Does mommy sometimes call you a turkey, Eve? Mm -hmm. You know, when you're being crazy? She calls you and your sister a couple of turkeys. Over the river and through the woods. To grandmother's house we go. The horse knows the way to carry the sleigh. Do you take a horse to your grandmother's house? Mm-hmm. Or do you take a car? Through the white and drifted snow. Over the river and through the woods. Treats for Fluffy. I don't know, that dog doesn't look very fluffy to me. No, it doesn't look even nice. Oh, how the wind does blow. It stings the nose, the toes, and bites the nose. Uh Uh-oh. Is Fluffy off after the turkeys? I think he is. As over the ground we go. Over the river and through the woods. Oh, what are they doing here? Are they putting on a coat and standing on a... What? Did a leaf just fall on my head through the open top of the car yeah. oh boy i guess that's why you don't drive with the top open with the sunroof open in the fall to have a first rate play i don't remember that from the original song oh hear the bell ring oh that must be grandma and grandpa the gobblers ting ling ling Hurrah for Thanksgiving Day. Yeah, now I'm, now I'm getting weird with the melody. Sorry, guys. Over the river and through the woods. Uh-oh, it's Fluffy again. Gotta watch out for that dog, Fluffy. Trot fast, my dapple gray. Spring over the ground like a hunting hound. Oh, oh. grandmother is angry about that flipped over pie. Would your Baba get angry if you flipped a pie on the ground? I bet she would. For this is Thanksgiving Day. Oh look, they made friends after all. Grandma said, hey Fluffy, 
don't you knock my pie over. But as long as you don't knock my pie over, I'll give you a nice, a nice Thanksgiving dinner. And then we can hang out and I'll use you as a footrest. Is that silly? Okay. Now we've got, oh, we read, just read this one. This is Turkey Trouble by Wendy Silvano, illustrated by Lee Harper. And I wonder if that's what they call a nom de plume or a pseudonym or a pen name. Because Harper Lee is the name of a lady who wrote a very famous book, one of my favorite books when I was a kid, and one of my favorite movies called To Kill a Mockingbird. But this... This isn't about killing a mockingbird. This is about a turkey. Let's see. Don't kick, please. Turkey was in trouble. Bad trouble. The kind of trouble where it's almost Thanksgiving and you're the main course. But turkey had an idea. What if he didn't look like a turkey? What if he looked like a horse? Surely Farmer Jake wouldn't eat a horse for Thanksgiving. His costume wasn't bad. In fact, Turkey looked just like a horse. Almost. What do you think, Eve? Does he look like a horse? He, looks, he did a pretty good job, right? Moo, said Cal. Stop horsing around, Turkey. How'd you know it was me, moaned Turkey. Too short, said Cal. Gobble, gobble, grumbled Turkey. But looking at cow gave Turkey a new idea. Surely Farmer Jake wouldn't eat a cow for Thanksgiving. You know who would eat a cow for Thanksgiving? Yeah. Your daddy. Because you know what he likes to eat? Beef. I like to eat beef. Yeah, his costume wasn't bad. In fact, Turkey looked just like a cow. Almost. That one's pretty good. Other than, do you know any turkey, I mean any cows that are shaped like a box? Mm. Oh, you do know? No, you do? Or you don't? Mm. Oink, 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 snorted Pig. Holy cow, is that you, Turkey? How'd you know it was me, groaned Turkey. Too skinny, said Pig. Gobble, gobble, grumbled Turkey. But looking at Pig gave Turkey a new idea. Surely Farmer Jake wouldn't eat a pig for Thanksgiving. What do you think he's going to do? Dress up like a pig. Dress up like a pig. His costume wasn't bad. In fact, Turkey looked just like a pig. Almost. Does he look like a pig? Or does he look like a turkey with a flower pot on his nose? A flower pot. A flower pot. Ba ba bleated sheep. Quit being a ham, turkey. How'd you know it was me, wailed turkey. Too clean, said sheep. Gobble, gobble, grumbled turkey. But looking at sheep gave turkey a new idea. What do you think the idea is going to be? Surely Farmer Jake. Like yeah, wouldn't need a sheep for Thanksgiving. His costume wasn't bad. In fact, Turkey looked just like a sheep. Almost. Oh, he, I think he did a better job with the sheep costume. That's a pretty good one. cock a doo doo crowed Rooster. Bad idea, Turkey. How'd you know it was me, howled Turkey. Too brown, squawked Rooster. Gobble, gobble, grumbled Turkey. But looking at Rooster gave Turkey a new idea. In fact, it was his best idea yet. He already looked a lot like Rooster. This costume would be easy. Surely Farmer Jake wouldn't eat a rooster for Thanksgiving. Or would he? Rooster might be his next choice, Turkey worried, since roosters and turkeys look so much alike. Oh, gobble, gobble. Farmer Jake. <coughs> Farmer Jake came into the barn. Turkey, 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 come out, come out wherever you are. Where's the turkey? asked Farmer Jake's wife. I don't know, he said. I looked everywhere. Oh dear, what will we do without a turkey for Thanksgiving? Well, we could always eat the rooster, I guess. Uh oh, that's just what he was afraid of, isn't it? Oh no, not rooster, thought turkey. He looked around desperately for one more idea. Then he found it. What do you think he's going to do? Where is he, Eve? I don't know. Is he in the garden? Yeah. And what's all around? Well, I think it's, it might be tomatoes and peppers, but they look kind of like apples. Mm -hmm. His costume wasn't bad. In fact, it was turkey's best yet. Ding dong, happy Thanksgiving. Did you order a pizza, asked Farmer Jake's wife. Nope, he said, but it's a good idea. So they all sat down and gobbled up the pizza, and it was turkey's best Thanksgiving ever. Have you ever had a Thanksgiving pizza? 
Sounds pretty good though. So did they do a vegetarian pizza, an all vegetable pizza? Mm -hmm. Pretty good solution, Turkey. Took you a while to get there, but I think you came up with a good one. Okay. This is one we haven't read yet. Amelia Bedelia talks turkey. Do you know about Amelia Bedelia yet, Eve? I don't think you do. Well, you're gonna I think you're gonna like Amelia, old Amelia. This is by Herman Parrish, pictures by Lynn Sweat. It was a cool, crisp morning in November. Amelia Bedelia and cousin Alkalu brought a visitor to school. May I help you? asked a woman. I hope so, said Amelia Bedelia. The principal, Mrs. Bloom, wants a pumpkin for your Thanksgiving pageant. Are you Amelia Bedelia? said the woman. That's me, said Amelia Bedelia. And this is cousin Alkalu. Hello there, said the woman. Mrs. Bloom asked me to meet you. I am Mrs. Carson, the acting principal. You convinced me, said Amelia Bedelia. <coughs> Will you play a principal in the pageant? I think she misunderstood what acting principal means. I am not playing a part, said Mrs. Carson. I am the principal until Mrs. Bloom returns. Where did she go, asked Cousin Alkalu. Flew, said Mrs. Carson. Flew, said Amelia Bedelia. Where did she fly? But is that what she meant? No. Did she mean the principal was flying? No. <coughs> or did she mean the principal was sick? She did not catch a plane, said Mrs. Carson. She caught a virus. Every third grade teacher is out sick. That's awful, said Cousin Alkalu. It gets worse, said Mrs. Carson. The third graders are supposed to put on the Thanksgiving pageant in a few days. I'm afraid we'll have to cancel it. I'd be happy to help them, said Amelia Bedelia. You would? What a relief, said Mrs. Carson. Can I help out too, said Cousin Alkalu? I'm really handy at building things. That is wonderful, said Mrs. Carson. Let's go to the auditorium. I will introduce you to the children. On the way, Mrs. Carson showed off the artwork. A few students are absent, she said. Others are new or need parts. You'll have to juggle them around. Uh-oh. The stage was filled with third graders. Attention, everyone, said Mrs. Carson. Gather around and meet Amelia Bedelia. She is here to help you rehearse your play. Listen to her and do exactly what she says. The kids stared at Amelia Bedelia. You all look nice, said Amelia Bedelia, but why are you wearing costumes now? The pageant is a couple of days away. This is a dress rehearsal, said a boy. Is that so, said Amelia Bedelia. Well, then why aren't you wearing dresses? Everyone giggled. Because I play Miles Standish, said the boy. But you look more like a pilgrim than I do. You make me feel right at home. There is one difference, said a girl. Your shoes don't have buckles. She knelt down and put a pair of buckles on Amelia Bedelia's shoes. How pretty, said Amelia Bedelia. They remind me of a nursery rhyme. It goes, one, two, buckle my shoe. Now I finally understand it. We should practice our lines, said the girl. Good idea, said Amelia Bedelia. Who wants to go first? I should, said a boy. I am the narrator. He turned toward the empty seats and began. In the year 1620, the Mayflower sailed. Wait a minute, said Amelia Bedelia. While you talk, the rest of the children can practice their lines. Line up, everybody. In no time at all, Amelia Bedelia had lined up all of the third graders. There was a line of boy pilgrims, a line of girl pilgrims, a line of boy Indians, a line of girl Indians, <clears throat> or Native Americans. You sure know your lines, said Amelia Bedelia. A boy walked up and said, may I have a different part? Amelia Bedelia looked at his hair. You sure can, she said. She took a hairbrush out of her purse. She parted the hair down the middle. Is that what he meant? Did he mean he wanted a new hairdo? Is that what he meant, Evie? Yeah. No, I don't think so. That is a much better part, said Amelia Bedelia. But he wanted a different role in the play, didn't he? Yeah. <clears throat> I need an important part, said a girl. My mom told me to play a big role. Amelia Bedelia thought a moment and said, hmm, there were lots of hungry pilgrims and Indians. Tell your mom that you'll play a very big role. I will make you a special costume. Thanks, said the girl. She will be happy. Evie, what kind of a role do you think she's going to be? Uh, I don't know. Does it look like Amelia Bedelia is going to make her a dinner roll? Yeah. Oh, boy. And I was not given anything to do, said a boy. Any suggestions, asked Amelia Bedelia. My dad says I'm a big ham, he said. Well, that's too bad, said Amelia Bedelia. Thanksgiving is for turkeys, not hams. You could star in the Easter pageant. 
Easter is months away, said the boy. Well, you've got a point, said Amelia Bedelia. Let's add a ham to our Thanksgiving menu. I will make you a special costume, too. Oh, boy, this is crazy. Amelia Bedelia looked at everyone's costumes. Something was missing. Aha, she said. Who's going to be the turkey? Raise your wings so I can see you. Tom was our turkey, said a girl, but he got sick and went home. Flu, said Cousin Alkaloo. No, said the girl he walked. <laughs> yes, yeah, said a boy. Turkeys can't fly. Oh, but can turkeys fly? They sure can. The turkeys in our backyard, where do they fly, Evie? They fly. Do they fly up into the tree? Because yeah. where do turkeys sleep? Turkeys sleep in trees. Guys, if you didn't know that, wild turkeys sleep in trees. And it's kind of scary the first time you learn it. I'm getting hot. i got to take my sweatshirt off. I can't believe it snowed last week. I'm hot. And now I'm too hot. I'm hot too. Right, you can unbutton your sweater. Whew. Okay. So, yeah, turkeys can't fly. That's why they wind up on the table. Wild turkeys can fly, said a tall girl. See, that's what we just said. They are also very smart birds. Who are you, asked Amelia Bedelia. My name is Diana, said the girl. Do you know anyone named Diana, Eve? Mm, the sister. My sister, that's right. Uh, that's the new kid, said a boy. She's the biggest turkey I ever saw. <laughs> a couple of kids laughed. Amelia Bedelia ignored them. Yeah, it's not very nice, unless your mother's joking and calls you a turkey. Well, Diana, said Amelia Bedelia, since you know so much about turkeys, how would you like to be one? I'll make you an extra special costume. The kids who laughed weren't laughing now. Great, said Diana. I'll be your turkey. Let me help you out. Okay. Amelia Bedelia measured Diana for her costume. After you get dressed, she said, you'll need some stuffing. Every turkey does, said Diana. Say, do you know the difference between stuffing and dressing? No. You help me. Yeah. I'm not sure, said Amelia Bedelia. Do you guys know the difference between stuffing and dressing? No. They're the same thing. In the north, we call it stuffing for the turkey. And down south, and I think in some of the Midwest, they call it dressing. But they don't mean salad dressing. They mean what we call stuffing. All right, so here's the joke. There's a dressing room over there. I wonder where the stuffing room is. What? That's crazy. One of the pilgrim girls spoke up. Stuffing is the stuff you stuff inside the turkey. Dressing is just extra, extra stuffing. Okay, that you could, that couldn't be stuffed in. Yeah, it, you can eat that. Yeah, you can eat that. <clears throat> Why, thank you, said Amelia Bedelia. All I know is that after Thanksgiving, I'm the one who feels stuffed. Me too, said Diana. I like milk duds. Yeah. Oh, I did know you like milk duds. Yeah. That's some nice extra Halloween candy, huh? Mm -hmm. Hey, Cousin Alkaloo, said Amelia Bedelia, can you build an oven to roast the turkey? That's not how pilgrims cooked, said a girl. Their turkey was spit roasted. Yuck, said Amelia Bedelia. Who wants to eat a turkey roasted in spit? Do they mean you spit on the turkey, though? No, they mean you put a steak on either side of it and spin it over a fire. That's called a spit. A boy laughed, and then he explained. They didn't cook the turkey in spit. They cooked the turkey on a spit. He showed them a picture in a history book. There you go. That's what it looks like right there. Another boy wheeled out a cart. Gangway, he said. When they talk about the harvest, I'll come out to show our crops. Good work, said Cousin Alkaloo. Can you manage that huge pumpkin? I think so, said the boy. Pumpkins are just a big type of squash. Be careful, said Amelia Bedelia. That pumpkin weighs more than you do. I'd hate for it to squash you. I almost forgot, said a girl. We need to make sweet potatoes, too. Potatoes aren't sweet, said Amelia Bedelia. They can be, said a boy. My grandma makes them taste like candy. I know what I'll do, said Amelia Bedelia. I'll make a batch of french fries and sprinkle them with sugar. Sounds yummy, said Cousin Alkaloo. Is that what sweet potatoes are, though? No. They're, no, they're a different kind of potato. And then sometimes you can put maple sugar or maple syrup or brown sugar or even marshmallows on top of them. And you can bake it. Yeah. For the next few days, Amelia Bedelia solved problems big and small. Cousin Alkaloo built props just the way she told him to. Finally, it was the day of the pageant. The auditorium was filled with families, friends, teachers, and other students. Best of all, the third grade teachers and principal felt well enough to come. Mr. and Mrs. Rogers showed up to see if Amelia Bedelia needed help. 
Pardon me, said Mr. Rogers. You look like someone who used to work at my house. I still do, said Amelia Bedelia. Don't I? He's just teasing, said Mrs. Rogers. I deserve it, said Amelia Bedelia. I've spent so much time with the kids. Thank you for coming to see the pageant. The two principals joined them. Amelia Bedelia is amazing, said Mrs. Carson. I didn't have to worry about the pageant at all. I hope you like our changes, said Amelia Bedelia. Some improvements. Oh, changes, asked Mrs. Bloom. What changes? Some improvements, said Amelia Bedelia. We brought the Thanksgiving story up to date. Now both principals looked very worried. Please excuse me, said Amelia Bedelia. Cousin Alkalu and I are the only stagehands. We have to get everything ready. Good luck, said Mrs. Rogers. Break a leg, said Mr. Rogers. Amelia Bedelia stepped, stopped in her tracks. She said, you must be really mad at me if you want me to break my leg. Of course not, said Mr. Rogers. That's a tradition in the theater. Saying break a leg means good luck. That is wacky, said Amelia Bedelia. Break a leg sounds like good luck for the emergency room. Backstage, the third graders were nervous. Everybody relax, said Amelia Bedelia. You've rehearsed. You know what to do. Go out there and have some fun. We'll have fun afterwards, said a girl. The parents are giving us a cast party. A cast party, said Amelia Bedelia. That reminds me. Nobody break a leg. The children took their places. The lights went down. The curtain went up. The audience applauded politely. The narrator walked out and began. In the year 1620, the Mayflower sailed from Europe to the New World. The pilgrims sang out, One, two, buckle my shoe, three, four, head for the shore. Well, so far that sounds pretty normal, right? The ship ran into Plymouth Rock. Oh boy, here we are, said Miles Standish. This is the right address, 1620 Plymouth Rock. Follow me. Crithunk. When he jumped onto Plymouth Rock, the whole thing collapsed. Oh, hey, said a girl. You're supposed to land on Plymouth Rock, not flatten it. In the audience, Mr. Rogers began to laugh. An elbow from Mrs. Rogers cured him of that. The narrator continued. The pilgrims suffered many hardships. The winter was bitterly cold. Cousin Alkalu stood on a ladder. To represent winter, he dangled snowflakes he had built. The snow was deep, said the narrator. Big flakes fell on Plymouth Colony. Just then, Cousin Alkalu lost his grip. Uh-oh. Right. The snowflake hit the stage and rolled away. That was so cool, yelled a fourth grader. Yeah, shouted another. The snow really fell. Even some parents applauded. Oh boy. The narrator continued. When the spring came, the pilgrims planted corn and other crops with the help of their Indian or Native American friend, Squanto. He showed the pilgrims a neat trick. If you plant corn and some fish, it will fertilize the seed and grow better corn. I didn't got you coffee. Oh, I think that was your hot chocolate. The chorus of pilgrims chanted, five, six, plant with fish sticks. As the pilgrims put in the fish sticks, Squanto explained to the audience, you're supposed to use real fish, but that would stink up the whole school. As the pilgrims watered the corn, Amelia Bedelia slowly pulled on a string. Can I have some new coffee, Mama? No, thank you. Corn Maybe appeared to Mama. grow up to the sky. Oh, honey, I'm, I'm still, I'm still. You have water in the back. In the audience, a child yelled out, look, those fish sticks really work. Where's your water? I'll help you open it. The narrator continued. The pilgrims took good care of their crops. Squanto taught them how to fish and hunt. Working together, said the narrator, they gathered enough meat and fish to last through the coming winter. Backstage, Amelia Bedelia stood on a ladder. She flung colored leaves to show it was fall. Suddenly she lost her balance, the ladder tipped over and squanch. Luckily, the pumpkin broke her fall. Uh-oh, said Amelia Bedelia. I squashed Cousin Alkaloo's squash. The boy in charge of the cart did not notice Amelia Bedelia. He wheeled it out on stage. Uh-oh. The narrator continued. When autumn arrived, the pilgrims harvested corn, beans, and squash. They also gathered nuts. Mr. Rogers saw Amelia Bedelia being pulled out of the pumpkin. He said to Mrs. Rogers, that is one big nut, all right. I hope she didn't break her leg. They were relieved to see Amelia Bedelia tiptoe off stage. In fact, said the narrator, the pilgrims had so much food that they decided to have a feast to celebrate and give thanks. A chorus of pilgrim girls sang, seven, eight, set out plates, nine, ten, invite our Indian or Native American friends. They cooked and cooked, said the narrator, and never used a microwave. The audience clapped. Since that first Thanksgiving lasted for three days, there weren't 
Any leftovers? The audience clapped louder. How's the weather up top, kid? Good. Good? Okay. Pilgrims in India competed in games, but win or lose, they were all good sports. The audience cheered. There was plenty of food, said the narrator. A large roll stepped out on stage. A big ham joined her. They both got plenty of applause. Their parents were very proud. Hi, Mom. Hey, Dad. Of course. I'm ready to go out. Okay. Of course, said the narrator. There was a ton of turkey. When Diana made her entrance, the audience went wild. Uh-oh, said Amelia Bedelia to herself. Diana looks pretty nervous. I'll bet she forgot what to say. Amelia Bedelia called out from backstage. Psst, Diana, she whispered loudly. You're supposed to say, gobble, gobble. Say, gobble, gobble. All the other kids heard Amelia Bedelia. They thought she was talking to them. They did exactly what she told them to do. Gobble, 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 gobble. The whole audience joined in. It sounded like a flock of turkeys had been let loose in the school. Two children carried out a giant wishbone. As they snapped at the entire cast hollered, We wish you a happy Thanksgiving. As Diana turned around to watch, she lost her balance and fell off stage right into the arms of Mrs. Carson. The audience thought it was part of the play. They stood up and clapped loudly. Bravo! Hooray! Yay! The cast party was great fun. Amelia Bedelia's sweet potatoes were a hit. So was Diana. All the kids surrounded her. The boy who had called her a turkey said, Diana, you deserve a new nickname. We'd like to call you Wings because you winged it and flew off the stage. What do you say? Diana nodded, smiled, and said, Gobble, gobble! Mrs. Bloom and Mrs. Carson joined the party. Hi, Mrs. Carson, said Amelia Bedelia. Thank you for acting in the pageant. I made a lucky catch, said Mrs. Carson. Sometimes an acting principal has to act fast. I'm glad you did, said Diana. I almost got the stuffing knocked out of me. Amelia Bedelia, said Mrs. Bloom. This Thanksgiving, I am thankful for you and Cousin Alkaloo. I'm thankful too, said Amelia Bedelia. I'm thankful that no one broke a leg. Or a drumstick, said Cousin Alkaloo. Well done, said Mr. Rogers. I'm thankful for both of you. This is the first Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving pageant I've been to that wasn't a turkey. <laughs> Mrs. Rogers noticed that the hey. pumpkin's blue ribbon... You're making fun of me. I'm not making fun of you. You were. You just were. No, no, I was telling you to laugh because they, they made a joke in the book. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't make fun of you, you silly. Well, Mrs. some jokes are not nice. That's true. Mrs. Rogers noticed that the pumpkin's blue ribbon was stuck on Amelia Bedelia. She plucked it off and put it on Diana. Congratulations, she said. You're a prize-winning pair. That was nice. That was nice. On their way home, Mr. Rogers said, Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. I look forward to carving the turkey. Amelia Bedelia was very impressed. She had no idea he was a sculptor. Is that what he meant? No, he just meant cutting the turkey. I love Thanksgiving too, said Mrs. Rogers. No presents to buy, wrap, or return. That's true, said Amelia Vidalia. It's all about family and food. I've got a new recipe for sweet potatoes. I can't wait to try it, said Mr. Rogers. You're a Thanksgiving expert by now. Not yet, said Amelia Bedelia. There is one thing I was wondering. When you count your blessings and you run out of fingers, is it okay to use your toes? Mr. and Mrs. Rogers looked at each other. Neither of them spoke for a while. Then Mrs. Rogers said, yes, of course. Mr. Rogers added, that's what we do. He pulled into their driveway. Home, sweet home, said Amelia Bedelia. Oh, silly Amelia Bedelia. Even when she misunderstands stuff, she does a pretty good job, doesn't she? Things turn out okay? All right, Evie, what's the last one we should read? Are we reading Winter is Coming or are we reading The Circus Ship? Two books. Pick one. Okay. We'll save that one for another time. So this one has nothing to do with Thanksgiving. This one is The Circus Ship by Chris Van Dusen. Thanksgiving is not here yet. Not yet. Not till the end of the month. Five miles off the coast of Maine and slightly overdue, a circus ship was steaming south in a fog as thick as stew. Mom, I'm in here for right now, but I'm going to okay. keep my headphones on, okay? Okay. On board were 15 animals who traveled to and fro. The okay, next day, it was Boston okay. for another circus show. Okay, buddy. The captain, Mr. Carrington, was honest and sincere. He thought that they should drop the hook 
and wait for things to clear. But Mr. Payne, the circus boss, was terribly demanding. He stomped up to the helm where Captain Carrington was standing and screamed, Don't stop! Keep going! I've got a show to do! Just get me down to Boston Town tomorrow, sir, by two. Then came a crash, an awful bash. Things flew into the air. The ship had smashed into a ledge that no one knew was there. The shattered ship began to tip, then sank without a sound. The splashing, thrashing animals swam round and round and round. The captain said to Mr. Payne, pray tell, what shall we do? We can't just leave them here to drown. We've got to save them too. The animals, yelled Mr. Payne. Why, sir, what are you, daft? It's me that you should rescue. Pull me up into the raft. Now ferry me to safety, sir, before I die of cold. Don't question me, barked Mr. Payne. Just do as you are told. That's not very nice, is it? Through chilly water all night long, the animals swam on until they reached an island beach just before the dawn. They pulled themselves up on the shore, bedraggled, cold and beat, then staggered to the village on weary, wobbly feet. The people in the neighborhood had just begun to rise, and when they saw those animals, they had to rub their eyes. They thought they saw an elephant, but wait, how could that be? And what's that little monkey doing in the cherry tree? Soon animals were everywhere and into everything. There's an ostrich in the outhouse. There's a hippo in the spring. There's a tiger in the tulips. There's a lion on the lawn. There's a python in the pantry. It went on and on and on. Mr. Hood was stacking wood and nearly jumped a mile when he found the alligator sleeping on his pile. And Mrs. Dottie Daly, who grew daisies by the bunch, discovered that the zebra had been eating them for a lunch. And Mrs. Fanny Feeney found, according to the rumors, the silly little circus monkey swinging in her bloomers. But everything changed quickly. Like the turning of the tide, the night the abbot's shed caught fire with Emma Rose inside. From high above the abbot's farm, the tiger saw the shed. The sight of smoke and fire, honey, look right here, don't pull it back, triggered something in his head. He'd jumped through flames a thousand times back in his circus days. So he ran past all the people and he leapt into the blaze. Then everybody panicked, help, help, what can we do? when from the raging fire something burst into view. It was the most amazing sight, and everybody froze when they saw the tiger saving little Emma Rose. The tiger's risky rescue changed everybody's mind. The animals weren't bothersome, the animals were kind. And so they lived together, side by side they got along. It didn't seem like anything could possibly go wrong. Then Little Red the messenger came running with a word. Apparently a circus ship had sunk from what he'd heard. The animals are from that boat they swam in from the bay. The greedy owner wants them back. He'll be here any day. So the people called a meeting and they quickly hatched a plan. No animal that came ashore would sail off with that man. The next day at the crack of dawn, a ship was at the pier. And up the lane marched Mr. Payne, whose voice was loud and clear. I am the circus owner. My ship sank in the murk. I've come to find my animals and put them back to work. He hiked until he came into the center of the town. His face was red. He scratched his head. He stood there with a frown. Mr. Payne looked high and low, but still he couldn't see the 15 circus animals of his menagerie. Evie, can you see any animals hiding in the picture? there's an ostrich oh and an elephant and a giraffe do you see the tiger or the camels are the camels in the hay bales is that a camel is that a tiger is that is that a gorilla and an antelope oh no that's a bear riding a unicycle or a tricycle they're hiding a hippo's in there a lion right there oh interesting a baby monkey he ran around the alleyways. He searched the village square. He even checked a chicken coop. His animals weren't there. Mr. Payne was tuckered out. His heavy chest was heaving. Then Little Red stepped up and said, I think your boat is leaving. He ran off in a fit of rage. His ship was leaving sight. So he jumped into a rowboat and he rowed with all his might. And from that day, they liked to say, their lives were free of pain. It was a happy, peaceful place upon that isle in Maine.
Was that a funny story? Mm-hmm. All right, guys. I think that's it for today. We'll save some of the other books for another social distancing story time. What do we say, Eve? Thanks for all of those distancing story time. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.